The temporary ban would apply to subdivisions proposing 45 or more housing units. If passed, the 180-day moratorium would retroactively take effect starting on April 16, 2024 and run through October, preventing the construction of any large-scale residential development and the acceptance or processing of any application for one. Chip Hall, a real estate developer with Cottage Advisors, worries about the long-term impact this moratorium and housing regulations could have. My worry is, is that, you know, you put too many restrictions on developments and with that you end up pushing the prices of homes, it, push, it pushes the prices down of land because now you can't get as many units on the acreage that you could today. So current landowners and wells could be under pressure. The moratorium was proposed to give town officials more time to assess existing infrastructure, public facilities and ordinances and to make any desired changes before reviewing applications for residential housing development, something several voters were in favor of. I think it's the infrastructure, the schools are concerned, um, so they need to take a look, step back and take a breather. We've been building for a long time. I think the main thing would be is to have subdivisions off, not on Route 1, you know, take them to, we have enough property around here where they can build a subdivision. When you start building more subdivisions on Route 1, that's a problem. If passed, the moratorium would not impact projects already underway or currently under review. The select board could choose to renew the moratorium for up to 180 days. Hall thinks the town could use that time to determine where they might want to designate a high-density building zone. Polls will be open here at the Wells Junior High School Gymnasium until 8 p.m. For Maine's Total Coverage, I'm Jamie Ashley.